Good morning. My name is Teresa Alessio, and I am um, recording this presentation. This is the first in our six-part uh, webinar series on the integrated diagnostic approach to thyroid nodules. Our first uh, session in the series is called Essential Thyroid Cytology. And I am Teresa Lacio, and I'm the director of the Cairo Cytodiagnostic Center. Just a little bit about our uh, organization, the Cairo Cytodiagnostic Center is part of Cairo Diagnostic Laboratory, which opened in 2013. Uh, Dr. Sharif Ibrahim uh, is the um, president of the company. He's a hematopathologist. We are CLIA certified and we have a New York State license. Our cytology division opened in May of 2014, and our cytodiagnostic center was constructed in June of 2014. In our cytodiagnostic center, we perform ultrasound-guided spinal aspiration biopsies, or FNAs, um, and we use a sonic touch ultrasound. We uh, see the patients, we process, we take the um, samples under ultrasound guidance, we process smears and cell blocks and immunohistochemistry on site, um, and we also provide immediate diagnosis for our patients and referring physicians. So just a little bit about me. I'm the director of cytology and the cytodiagnostic center. Um, I was previously at a uh, laboratory called CBL Path where I was a staff cytopathologist. Um, I'm also formerly the director of uh, cytology and clinical associate professor at SUNY Downstate in Brooklyn. Uh, I did my residency. Um, at Mount Sinai in New York City, and I did my fellowship in cytopathology where I trained in uh, the special, specialty of spinal aspiration biopsy at NYU. I'm board certified in anatomic pathology and cytopathology. I have certification from the College of American Pathologists in ultrasound guided FNA, and I'm currently um, being certified for endocrine uh, and neck ultrasound. So in my experience, um, I've seen many challenges in diagnostic medicine. Um, as a pathologist, some of these challenges include unsatisfactory samples, uh, also non-diagnostic samples. Um, I know that uh, referring physicians face issues with turnaround time, which can be related to um, courier issues, couriers not picking up the specimen or, um, you know, delays in processing. Um, there's also, uh, on the clinical side, a poor communication between referring physicians and the pathologist. Um, which results in a lack of clinical correlation. So what I propose, uh, both through the Cytodiagnostic Center and in this webinar series, is an integrated diagnostic approach. And this provides the best service that we all can provide for our patients. We have clinical correlation, we have ultrasound correlation, and we have correlation with cytology. So it's really doing the triple test to get to arrive at a correct diagnosis for our patients. A pathologist who performs their own biopsies um, does, has the clinical information uh, provided by the patient, the ultrasound information provided by the ultrasound exam that they perform, and the cytology, uh, which is taken at the time of the sample. Um, procurement of the patient. Um, because we do immediate specimen triage, we get samples um, for further testing uh, at the same time that we do the initial biopsy so the patient doesn't need to return for another FNA. Um, and immediately we know if there are significant or positive findings and those can be reported as soon as possible to the referring physician and treatment plans can uh, start to be made. 
So in this webinar series that is the uh, integrated diagnostic approach to thyroid nodules, I'm proposing six sessions. Um, this first session is going to cover thyroid cytology. Um, in subsequent sessions, uh, I'm going to cover ultrasound features of, of thyroid nodules, uh, molecular testing in cases of indeterminate cytology. Um, all throughout the, uh, the series, I will be referring to the upgraded 2014 uh, guidelines set forth by the American Thyroid Association, which are still yet to be published in print, but um, they are available um, through the ATA website. And I will also be presenting interesting cases from our Cytodiagnostic Center of patients that we see uh, on a regular basis. So, in terms of thyroid cytology, uh, the 2014 ATA guidelines specifically recommend that the Bethesda system be used to report thyroid cytology findings. Um, this is a, a system that was uh, put into place uh, in 2008. Um, out of a conference uh, that was held at the Nans National Cancer Institute in Bethesda, Maryland, uh, where uh, not only pathologists, but radiologists, uh, endocrinologists, myself included as a pathologist, attended this conference. And it, the uh, terms of reporting and the definitions were uh, set forth at that time. Um, this is a common language that pathologists can use uh, to report the cytology findings. If uh, a pathologist reports a benign nodule in New York City, and the uh, pathologist in California can understand what a category two benign nodule means. So this allows us to communicate more freely and more clearly. However, with that all being said, Inter-observer variability still does exist. And how, in what form does that exist? The inter-observer variability is really when one pathologist sees something and the other pathologist sees something else. It's kind of like a tomato-tomato situation. Um, these, this variability is most apparent when um, one pathologist may call something benign and the other pathologist calls it atypical. Um, or vice versa, or atypical versus suspicious. Um, it's not an issue of benign or malignant. Those discrepancies uh, really don't occur as often as atypical versus benign or versus suspicious. These gray areas are the diagnostic dilemmas. They always have been, um, and as long as uh, cytopathology is an art, uh, which it will always be, um, there will always be um, areas open to interpretation, and everybody brings their own experience and their own opinions to the table when uh, looking at these specimens. Um, however, uh, the more clinical information is available, the more ultrasound findings uh, are available, and also um, in some cases, the more times that molecular testing is available, um, the easier it is to cut down on that intra-observer variability. So getting into the heart of the topic, um, first let me go over what the categories are officially uh, with the Bethesda system. Um, you have six categories, uh, one through six. Category one is non-diagnostic, and I'm going to get into the definition of what that means. Um, category two, which is definitely the largest category where most uh, thyroid nodules will fall into, is benign. Um, this encompasses um, adenomatous nodules, colloid nodules, Hashimoto's thyroiditis. Um, I will get into that in a few minutes when I get to subsequent slides. Category three, which is the category of most contention among pathologists, endocrinologists, ENTs alike, um, is the AUS or atypia of undetermined significance or follicular lesion of undetermined significance. That's a whole nother lecture. Um, 
which I can, I will also get into when I discuss uh, more about the Bethesda system in relationship to uh, ultrasound findings and also especially in relationship to molecular testing as this is the indeterminate category for which most molecular testing is performed. Category four, which is also uh, viewed as an indeterminate category, um, also susceptible to molecular testing, is follicular neoplasm or suspicious for follicular neoplasms. So not only does this um, include follicular neoplasms, such as follicular adenomas, or uh, suspicious for follicular carcinomas, it also um, includes the Herzl cell neoplasms. Um, Incidentally, Herzl cell nodules or Herzl cell lesions can also be um, given a, a, assigned a, di a category of three, um, but um, Herzl cell ne neoplasms usually fall in a three or four category. Um, rarely does a diagnosis of Herzl cell carcinoma uh, get made um, on cytology. That's usually a um, histologic diagnosis as is also a uh, follicular carcinoma, um, which is also a histologic diagnosis because you have to look for capsular invasion. This is not a diagnosis that is made on cytology. Category five is suspicious for malignancy. Usually this, um, the malignancy that it's suspicious for is um, papillary carcinoma, PTC, uh, but, um, there are other malignancies, of course, in the thyroid, both um, primary and metastatic diseases in the thyroid uh, that can be uh, category five. Category six is frankly malignant. Um, this is usually a straightforward diagnosis uh, because it is made when, there, when all the um, evidence is present on the slide. Um, it's a diagnosis that that can be made on cytology um, and often is, in most cases, helpful to clinicians when a, that diagnosis can be made. And thankfully, that diagnosis is not made as often as category two lesions. Then we get to the question of adequacy. Um, now, between uh, operators performing FNAs, the number of passes performed will vary. Um, I may do three passes, but uh, a colleague uh, down the road may do six to eight passes. I've seen any number. I've also seen someone do one pass and get adequate material. Um, always, if uh, an on-site assessment for adequacy is made at least by a cytopathologist or a cytotechnologist, uh, it, makes, it makes a life a lot easier for both the patient and the clinician. Because then uh, if, if we have adequate material, there's no reason to do um, six or eight passes and stick patients uh, more times than necessary. So accuracy can be dramatically improved um, when you have on-site assessment. Typically, uh, in my cytodiagnostic center and when we do on-site evaluations, uh, we do a DIFQIC smear, which is, um, this is a type of stain, which is a rapid stain. It takes about 30 seconds. Um, if some of you have seen it, it's the purple and blue stain. Um, it's the same kind of stain that's done for uh, peripheral blood smears. It's a right GEMSA stain. Um, the Papanicolaou stain or the PAP stain uh, is not just for cervical cytology. Uh, it is um, a, that is the routine stain for cytology. Uh, it um, takes a little bit longer. It takes about uh, 15 minutes to perform this stain. It's typically not done on site. However, uh, if I have a patient in my office that is uh, getting a biopsy, um, there are times when I will do this stain uh, so 
so that I can look at all the material uh, that I have uh, sampled from the patient. Um, typically, when I perform biopsies of my patients, I will do only the diff quick and I will save the pap stain for later. Uh, so I don't look at all the slides, but there are cases when I do look at all the slides and I have that available to me so that I can look at all the material. There are other stains uh, which are variations on that theme. Uh, the ultra-fast pap stain, which um, is a, a form of pap stain, which was developed by a colleague of mine, Grace Yang, um, is a useful stain with, um, with certain artifacts that make it uh, an interesting stain, especially for diagnosing papillary carcinoma. Some of the uh, cytology slides I will show you uh, include this stain. So another, a few words about non-diagnostic or unsatisfactory specimens. Um, these terms are not interchangeable. That is a very important point. Um, and this is actually set out straightforward um, in the Bethesda book. Um, by the way, you could purchase the Bethesda uh, system for reporting thyroid cytology on Amazon. It's like $35, and it's actually a very handy guide to have uh, if you perform biopsies, even if you don't do assessments or you don't do, um, you don't have a pathologist, you can still actually quickly uh, read through it, and um, it provides a lot of information in a small um, package. Um, but in this book, they state unsatisfactory specimens are always non-diagnostic, but some satisfactory specimens, meaning specimens that have material on the slide, can be considered non-diagnostic as well. Um, some pathologists may use the term insufficient for diagnosis uh, instead of saying non-diagnostic or unsatisfactory. Sometimes this is a term, this is terminology. Um, it really means the same thing. Um, what uh, unsatisfactory uh, will mean or insufficient for diagnosis means basically fewer than the minimum six groups of 10 cells. Um, in order for a satisfact, according to Bethesda, satisfactory specimen is six groups of 10 follicular cells. Um, so any fewer than the minimum, if people are counting, uh, you can call it non-diagnostic or unsatisfactory. Okay. Um, however, uh, poorly prepared slides or poorly stained slides, um, stains that have too much air drying artifact, uh, if the cells are crushed um, on smearing, or if the follicular cells are obscured by blood, these are also reasons to call it non-diagnostic. Um, sometimes uh, cyst fluid without follicular cells um, only macrophages uh, can also be uh, category one non-diagnostic. And, and the reasons for that are this, um, because papillary carcinomas can present as cystic lesions. And um, there, you know, there are cases where you don't want to miss, of course, you never want to miss a papillary carcinoma. And, um, and there, that while it's prudent for the pathologist to ask for a repeat biopsy um, where cyst fluid is uh, not the only component and to try and see some follicular cells. And I've seen cases where um, cyst fluid where only macrophages are present actually turn out to be uh, cystic papillary carcinoma. And this is really the case in a patient who's already had papillary carcinoma. Papillary carcinomas usually recur as cystic lesions, whether in the lymph node or um, in uh, the remaining thyroid, if there is remaining thyroid. There are exceptions to the adequacy requirement, meaning the six groups of 10 cells. Um, that is, if cytologic atypia exists. So anytime you see atypical um, follicular cells, um, that is uh, the adequacy requirement goes out the door. And that can be, you can make a diagnosis of um, category five or even sometimes category six if you're particularly daring. Uh, at least a category three indeterminate. Um, if there are lymphocytes, 
uh, with no follicular cell component. Uh, there are often times that Hashimoto's thyroiditis or chronic lymphocytic thyroiditis will present as this. You may not see a follicular cell component, and the only thing you see are uh, lymphocytes um, and a heterogeneous population of lymphocytes. Um, where And so this, uh, a diagnosis of um, favor Hashimoto's thyroid 